Hi, I'm Charlotte and welcome to the School of Pattern Cutting. Today I'm going to show you how to take your inspiration from a historical garment, but it could also be a garment from a catwalk, and how you can adapt your own patterns from that. It's going to be four videos to make sure, so make sure you watch all of them and let me know what you think. So to start off this series of taking inspiration from other garments, we're going to look at a really classic fashion changing garment, which is the Dior bar suit from 1947. And it changed sort of history because this is just after the Second World War, so you had years of utility fashion, and this brought back much more defined shapes, round shape, lots of fabric used, very luxurious. It sort of drew back to partly Victorian fashion as well after years of having very practical garments and restrictions. Um, I chose this because at the moment we've got the exhibition at the V&A celebrating Dior's work. And um, it's also because it's such a classic piece to work from. Um, this is what I would have classed as already historical because it's very different of how we wear clothes now. So it's got a corset underneath probably. Women had tiny waists back then, so there might be a waist of 50 or 55 centimeters, and it's got padding underneath, and the the skirt is heavily gathered. So if you want to actually see a video of how it's constructed and how different it is to most contemporary clothes, there's a really good one by the Victorian Albert Museum by one of the creators, so check it out. Um, so I'm going to actually adopt, adapt this for a contemporary mannequin shape, um, which has a much... Um, slighter ra um, ra ratio between waist and hip. Um, I'm also going to do less for padding. I'm going to show you more how to look at the um, image, see where all the design lines are and which volumes and stuff, and then how to drape it or how to adapt a toile by draping it and how to draft your pattern from it. Um, and I'm just using, if you did it properly, you could go to the gallery and look at it at all angles, but quite often in industry you just give an image or drawing. So I'm just going to work from two images. One is to the front, so I've got a very good front view. Um, and one is a side view, which also gives me some details from the back. And if possible, always get a back view, because it really helps you with working out how patterns um, follow the body round. Okay, so there's going to be three more videos after um, this. I'm going to show you First, how to analyze your image. Then I'm going to show you how to drape it on your trial on the mannequin. Then I'm going to show you how to draft it. And then you're going to look at my first proper trial. So make sure to watch them all and look forward to seeing you. The first thing you need to do when you're looking at a, either a historical pattern or something you found online or an old image, is to actually work out how the pattern looks. And with something like with your, it's quite easy because there's the exhibition with the VNA, so you can get really high res resolution, resolution images. So these are all from the VNA archive. Um, and you can different angles. If you're sort of inspired by something with a catwalk, sometimes it's quite tricky to see the back or the construction. Um, and if it's from an old painting or photo, you have to use your imagination for the back. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually draw on the picture and work out. So that's my waist. And as discussed, these images are in a way like couture. They go back to sort of 19th century techniques of boning and padding. And I'm not going to look at that. I'm just going to look at the shape of it. And um, so the waist, this is roughly the hip. And I can see the break point of the collar is quite high, so that's roughly at armhole level, maybe even looking at the other photos, it's even above. So I'm gonna say the armhole is there. And then I might do the break point three to five centimeters higher, but I'm actually gonna once I've made the first trial, I'm going to put on the stand and actually have a look at it. Um, and then it's got a reverse color. And then this is where it gets tricky. You have to try to follow the seam. So I think the seam is like this. So that's where it's great. If you can head to the V&A or something, you can actually see how the seams 
work very clearly. And then there's the shoulder seam. And looking at it, you can see a princess seam, which goes all the way down to the pocket. And then that princess seam also helps you roughly how wide the collar is. So it's quite a small collar sitting on the shoulder. So it's, if the whole shoulder is about 15 centimeters, then it's actually only it's only a roughly a fifth of it. So it's maybe only overlaying three centimeters. So it might be around five centimeters. I'm gonna try that out. And this angle, that's of quite important. And you can see it's roughly e um, even. So not none of them, neither of the corners is bigger than the other. They form a really nice line. So when I'm doing a pattern, I'm gonna sort of try to make them match and then you just have to cut out. And you can see that edge is much longer than this edge. And it's less than 90 degrees. Looking at all the photos. So that's how you sort of start working out. That's how you start copying a pattern. And this is gonna be quite a rough copy. But if you do it properly, it probably will take you half a day and you can make an identical copy of what you see. On this image, you can really clearly see the pockets. Yeah. So they start like this and the seam goes through them. And if you look at it, if the whole pocket is It's a bit wider on the shoulder, so I'm going to say it's maybe around 15 to 20 centimeters. And the seam goes through the fifth nearest to your seam allowance. So that's going to be about four centimeters. And what, and what's quite interesting, what you can see in this image, that there's no side seam but it's moved forward a bit and actually joins the edge of your pocket. So what they've done is by having a seam, a side seam, they've probably got one seam slightly forward and that might, I think it might be only about, it's actually similar to the edge of your pocket, so it might be four centimeters. And then the same will happen at the back. You can also tell it's a t probably a two-part sleeve as it's got um, buttons and an opening. So when I come to making a sleeve, I will change my basic one-piece collar to a two-piece collar. Um, then you can also see there's one, two, three, four, five buttons. And the top one sits just where it falls. And then the bottom one is right at the waist. And the width of the button stand is, it's quite wide either side of the collar. So I think I'm gonna try to understand. I think it might be similar to the edge of the pocket. So it might be again like four to five centimeters. And when you start looking also later on, I'm gonna do this out, I'm just gonna draw the pocket in, but do it last. But you then start try to work out how high is your pocket flap compared to how wide it is. And that's how you, it's a sort of balance of different measurements, which really makes the garments come together. So it's a straightforward princess line from the shoulder. So that's quite nice to seam. And then I'm gonna, as the garment is so fitted, I'm gonna interpret it, but it also has a second shaping seam coming here, which you can actually see very lightly. Okay. And you can see the collar is sort of a medium height, so four to five centimeters. Mm -hmm. And the original garment is out of silk, and then it's actually corset at the waist and then heavily padded, and which is why it stands off. So that's of quite a historical pattern making process. Nowadays, but you might put some padding in or you might fuse it. You could fuse it as like a neoprene, like a pad of fusing to give you that look. And it makes it look a bit more bearable contemporary as well. 
Okay, so the next now after I've done the, I've drawn my garment, I've done the rough measurements, I've sort of got an idea how it's going to look. What I'm going to do is cut out one of my front basic bodice, my back basic bodice, and my sleeve out of calico, put it on the stand, and then I'm just going to use tape to draw in my different lines, my collar, my button stand to help me work out how it's going to look. Thanks for watching. In the next video, I show you how to drape your design on the mannequin. So make sure you click on the link for part two. Thank you.